Hey what's up everyone, Arvat here and today we are going to talk about the rune engraving that's coming up in Season of Discovery. Now what's Season of Discovery? It's a classic plus that Blizzard just announced at BlizzCon. It will be coming up in a form of a season which is pretty much just a way for Blizzard to test how it's gonna play out, if the players are going to like it and hopefully down the road this will turn out into just a classic plus and it won't be a seasonal gameplay. Now what's rune engraving? It's a new system that Blizzard in is introducing with a um, season of discovery and how it works pretty much is you go and discover these runes and ru uh, you use runes to enchant pieces of your gear Currently, up to level 25, there is a bunch of different runes that you can enchant to chest, hands, and legs. Um, after level 25, there, there will be more runes that you will be able to enchant different pieces of gear. But what we know so far is we are going to have bunch of different runes up to level 25 because the level 25 will be the first level cap in Season of Discovery. Later on uh, this level cap will be increased as they announced it will be a progressive leveling which means they may increase it to like 35 or 45 or whatever but probably it won't be jump to 60. Uh, so today we are going to cover rune engraving for warriors and there is a bunch of good ones. Uh, you can find them on Wowhead. There is um, a page for the warrior runes or pretty much for all the runes. And also on Reddit there is this user that the name I cannot pronounce. But he added the, um, all of them in the screenshots and their descriptions. However, I have them all written down because it's a bit hard to see here. And once we go through all of them... I'm also going to give you my opinion on what will be the best for each spec for a leveling, PvP and PvE. Again, I have no hands-on experience uh, playing this. There is no PTR and only streamers on the BlizzCon um, were able to experience how it's going to play out. And once more, this will be relevant only for the level 25 um, since we do not have the knowledge of the runes that will be in the game after level 25 so yeah keep that in mind and let's go through them so for warriors on the chest piece we have flagellation if you if that's how you pronounce it but in any case gain a 25 percent bonus to physical damage done for 12 seconds after activating blood rage or berserker rage blood frenzy each time you deal bleed damage you gain three rage Raging Blow, a ferocious strike that deals 100% weapon damage, but can only be used while Enrage, Berserker Rage or Blood Rage is active. And Warbringer, your charge, intercept and intervene abilities are now usable while in combat and in any stance and will all remove movement impairing effects when activated. This one is from Wrath of the Lich King Prot uh, Talent and it was really OP back in the day. It was so OP that Blizzard had to nerf it uh, to the point where only Intervene would remove snares and roots. So I'm really hyped about this one. I'm pretty sure all the warriors are hyped up about this one and the only players that are not hyped about this one are the ones that will be fighting against warriors. For the legs you have Furious Thunder. Thunderclap now increases the time between attacks by an additional 6% and can be used in any stance. Consumed by Rage, enrages you and grants you a 25% melee damage bonus for 12 seconds or up to a maximum of 12 things after you exceed 80 Rage. Frenzied Assault, while wielding two-handed weapons, your attack speed is increased by 20%. And for Hands, we have Victory Rushback, instantly attack the target causing 151 damage and healing you for 10% of your maximum health. Only usable within 20 seconds after you kill an enemy that yields experience or honor. Endless Rage, you generate 25% more rage from all damage you deal. Devastate, while you're in defensive stance and have a shield equipped. Sunder Armor also deals 100% weapon damage, 
increased by 10% per application of Sunder Armor already on the target. So Sundering will feel less boring because you're actually going to be dealing some damage. Um, single Mind and Fury is back. While dual wielding, your physical uh, damage and movement speed are increased by 10%. And Quick Strike, a reckless instant melee attack with your two-handed weapon, dealing 50 to 83 physical damage. This ability benefits from and triggers all effects associated with Heroic Strike. So these are all um, engravings or runes that we have for warriors right now, um, up to level 25. So, uh, in my opinion, for PvP, uh, for arms specialization, for chest, I feel like Warbringer, out of all the options, would just be the best. Giving warriors ability to remove snares and roots through charge, intercept, and intervene to the lesser of extent because there is no arenas. In classic, it may be useful for the PGs, but just, you know, for charge and intercept, Helping warriors keep up uh, and staying on top of their target, this is just, for me, compared to all the other ones, this is just um, the best option you can get. Maybe in some duels you won't need it. For example, if you're fighting against Paladin or maybe another melee class, you may go with uh, Flagellation just for that 25% bonus physical damage done so you can try to one-shot it. Um, but again, just the Warbringer is like all around uh, the best one. However, I can still see Flagellation being useful in a lot of situations for Arms Warrior, but if you're going for the overall best pick, it would definitely be Warbringer for your chest rune. For legs, um, I feel like Frenzy the Salt will be the be will be the best one for Arms Warriors. Uh, and Furious Thunder may be a situational pick. Uh, so Frenza, Frenzy the Salt, uh, what it does is, while wielding two-handed weapons, your attack speed is increased by 20%, 20%. Now, this on its own may not be that great, but if you combine it with Warbringer, uh, it helps you actually stay on top of your target uh, a bit more, and which means that you will be able to get more hits and increasing your attack speed will ensure that you get more hits on, on your target. The other two, Consumed by Rage, I don't see how will this play out, especially since in duels you have hard time keeping up on your target, so um, going above 80 Rage for it to proc is something that I don't see happening at all in, in duels, um, maybe, maybe in BGs. Or maybe if you're drinking your uh, Rage Potion, this can be useful. But, you know, it would proc once and pretty much and that's it. Again, and if you drink uh, a, a Blood Rage Potion, then you can't drink any other potion. So I see Frenzy the Salt for Arms Warriors, absolutely best for PvP. Thunderclap may be useful, but giving up one engraving slot just for 6% uh, attack reduction is, is I don't see that as, as really powerful as Frenzy the Salt. And for the hands, um, I think that Endless Rage will be the best one. Quick Strike, currently we don't know how much damage it will deal or how useful will it be. I also don't know if it's gonna cost Rage, how much Rage it is. Does it replace Heroic Strike or how it works? So, um, but even if it's like really good ability, um, it's it's a bit hard to see better than Endless Rage. And what Endless Rage does is it gener you generate 25% more rage from all damage you deal. So it will be way easier for you to dump your rage um, to have enough rage for your executes, for your mortal strikes, pretty much for anything you want to do, those auto attacks um, will will just be pumping a lot of rage to you. Um, and then again, if you combine endless rage with frenzied assault, you know, increased attack speed and warbringer, I just see warriors dishing a lot of damage, at least arms warriors. 
Moving on to Fury Warriors, it's similar situation for chest, it's Warbringer, for legs, it's Furious Thunder. The reason why you're not using Frenzied Assault is because you may opt into Single-Minded Fury, which I feel like it may be the best option. However, if you won't be using Single-Minded Fury, then you can go with Frenzied Assault, but at this point, then I just see it as Scuffed Arms Warrior, to be honest. So Furious Thunder would be the best option for Fury Warriors unless, and again, unless there is some other options for Warriors to generate a lot more rage than maybe Consumed by Rage would be uh, a good choice. But for me, I think that Furious Thunder would be the best for Fury Warriors that are going with Single-Minded Fury. Which bring, brings us to Hands, and I think the best rune is Single-Minded Fury. While dual wielding, your physical damage and movement speed are increased by 10%. So combined this with uh, Warbringer, you are getting out of the roots, you're getting out of the snares, snares, and you have movement speed increased by additional 10%. And I feel like it, while this may not be like OP, while Warriors may not be Fury Warriors may not be OP in PvP. Movement speed increase um, is is um, just something that will help them a lot, especially with the Warbringer. Um, and again, if you are maybe dual wielding Skull of Gul'dan and you're get, getting out of the CC, you still are able to utilize 10% increased movement speed because of dual wielding. So it just feels like it would be the best overall. For protection, it's similar. For chest, you go with Warbringer. For legs, you go with Furious Thunder. And for hands, you go with Devastate. Um, why do you go with Devastate? Because um, you will be using Sunder Armor on melee targets to get uh, some of their armor off. You will even use it against Hunters, for example, Shamans, for example, as well because it will be easier to stay on top of them with Warbringer. And also other options, like you're not dual wielding, so you can't use single-minded fury. A quick strike, probably one dual. Yeah, you need two-handed weapon. Endless rage may be useful, but I'm not sure how much useful would it be for prot warriors in PvP, and Devastate just looks like the best option for me. Now, I don't think that Protection Warriors will be a thing in PvP because um, just because of the how better other two specs feel like. And also, even if you go with Endless Rage, uh, I feel like Protection Warriors may be Rage uh, start and just having a hard time to keep up with the damage, even with the, the mitigation they have. So, um, yeah, I would go with Devastate, but I wouldn't bring your hopes up for protection being good in pvp okay for pve runes and again up to level 25 or at level 25 for chest um this time i decided to go for flagellation for arms um the reason why is it gives you 25 percent bonus to physical damage done for 12 seconds after activating blood rage or berserker rage well, Blood Rage is on a minute cooldown and Berserker Rage is on a 30 seconds cooldown. This means that if you, let's say, pop a Blood Rage at the beginning of the fight, you will have 25% bonus damage for 12 seconds. Once that is down, you can pop Berserker Rage and then for additional 12 seconds, you will have the same bonus to physical damage increase. So that's 24 seconds that you have 25% bonus damage already from the start. So, um, and now Blood Rage is at, how much is that, 36 second cooldown, and Berserker Rage is at um, 18 seconds cooldown. So if you wait additional 18 seconds, then you can reapply it again. Once that is done, Blood Rage will be up from cooldown and then you can pop it again. So pretty much half of the 
time or half of the fight you will have 25% bonus to physical damage done and to me this feels like the best damage increase out of all of the other options um, blood frenzy sounds interesting however I don't feel like fights would be that long uh, or bleeds to give you enough rage for it to be uh, more useful than uh, flagellation and raging blow and warbringer I don't see them as any good in pvp in pve um, then for legs it's frenzied assault again you Increase your attack speed by 20% while have two-handed weapon. Uh, why I feel like Frenzied Assault again is going to be better than Consumed by Rage is you will be dumping Rage constantly uh, against the bosses. So getting to 80 Rage will probably be hard. I don't see how this can happen, honestly, for DPS Warriors. You will constantly be using Mortal Strike. Um, heroic strike unless you kind of don't use heroic strike for five auto attacks or however it takes to get to 80 reach for this um, damage bonus um, I don't see it happening at least for arms warriors maybe one thing that you can do is again drink the potion that gives you 40 rage so at the beginning of this fight you, you pop up blood rage which is around 10 rage you charge which is another like 15 to 20 rage depending if you have um, improved charge so now you're at 30 rage you use auto attack you're at 40 rage you drink a potion you're at 80 rage you get 25 percent melee damage bonus you spam heroic strike for next five six auto attacks or for next 12 seconds and that's it how do you get to back to 80 rage do you wait for another five six melee attacks until you have enough rage to, to for this to proc again maybe it just doesn't sound like something that will be that useful at level 25 maybe at 60 but currently at 25 i just feel like having 20 percent increased um attack speed with two-handed weapons it's like having heroism or bloodlust pop uh, all the time so yeah, for Fury, it's a um, similar situation. Um, for Chest, it's pretty much the same. For Legs, it's consumed by Rage. The reason why I think Fury uh, takes consumed by Rage is because, again, you will not be using two-handed weapons, in my opinion. You will go with single-minded Fury for the hands, which means you are not using Frenzied Assault. So consumed by the rage is the only other option that gives you uh, damage increase, thunderclap, or furious thunder doesn't do anything for fury warriors in PvE. And I feel like that fury warriors may be able to get to 80 rage more consistently than arms warriors, so you will be able to get enraged uh, more often. So and again, if, even if you don't proc it all the time this is only viable option if you're going with single-minded fury if you're not going with single-minded fury then frenzied assault is again an option and then uh, endless rage probably so yeah arms warriors for pve you go with flagellation frenzy frenzied assault and endless rage for fury flagellation consumed by rage and single-minded fury for protection you do flagellation again because you want that 25 percent increase in damage for initial threat so you can pop uh, blood rage you have 25 percent increased damage it helps you with the threat uh, legs uh, furious thunder this is the best utility the best defensive option and then for hands you go with um, devastate now i'm not sure if in classic plus or uh, season of discovery prot warriors will be using shield um, usually warriors at low level they just tank with two-handed weapons but with the raids at low levels and 
with maybe changes in dungeons, Prot Warriors may need to use a shield, and if that is the case, Devastate will be the best option. You will be sundering a lot, which will give you a lot of threat, you will, because you will be also doing weapon damage, and um, also will help your group to DPS the boss um, faster. So, pretty good options between, um, you know, damage increase, uh, uh, utility and defensive options, um, and threat generation. For leveling runes, this is a bit tricky, like for chest, uh, for arms warriors, and for fury warriors, and also for prot warriors, I feel like Warbringer and Flagellation are, are the best options. Um, Warbringer, just so you don't have to change stances uh, to use charge and intercept, and also you can use charge in combat. So if you get in a sticky situation, you can maybe charge out of it or intercept to another mob, hamstring it, and then run away. I feel like it will be really useful and flagellation is just there if you feel like you don't need warbringer you don't need to charge in combat um, you don't mind stance dancing you just want to kill things faster this will help a lot you get blood rage i believe at level 10 so you will be able to pop it consistently like every minute to almost you know one shot or two shot mobs because warriors just do a lot of damage uh, for legs, I go with Frenzy the Salt for Arms Warriors. Um, again, 20% increase in attack speed uh, just feels like the best option out of the three. And for hands, you would either go with Endless Rage or Victory Rush. Now, the reason why I feel like Endless Rage and the Victory Rush are the only viable options for leveling is because Victory Rush enables you to stay... Uh, in combat and fighting mobs for a longer time so you kill one mob you charge another one you get 10 percent of your of your health back let's say you one shot it two shot it because warriors have pretty good damage then you just charge to another mob and you get 10 percent of your health back um, this feels consistent but this also depends how fast you can kill mobs and um, how much damage you take by actually fighting the mobs because if you take like 30 to 40 percent of your hp down before you kill the mob then 10 percent may be not enough and you would rather use endless rage so you can kill the mobs faster uh, because of the rage generation and more heroic strikes quick strike again we don't know how much damage it will actually do but just depending on the description, it does not feel worth it, uh, at least for leveling. Unless it's free, if, if it doesn't cost any rage, which I doubt it. And I don't think that we have information how, rage, how much rage it costs. For protection, um, again, I feel like that uh, Warbringer and Flagellation are only choices. Uh, Furious Thunder, again, best defensive, best utility. And for hands, it would either be Devastate or Endless Rage. Endless Rage generates more rage, Devastate generates, uh, gives you more damage. So I feel like that Devastate would still be the best option for Protection uh, Warrior. And that would be all regarding uh, the runes, regarding my opinion of those runes. One thing that's worth mentioning is that the runes will be free of cost once you get them once you learn them you will be able to reapply them at any point anywhere uh, and they, it will be free of cost the only restriction of changing the runes will is that you cannot change them in the combat but that's um, pretty much it again uh, i'm really hyped about these changes it looks really nice i cannot believe that warriors will be getting warbringer back and that you'll be able to charge in combat in, in vanilla and or sorry in classic plus and that you will be able to also use let's say uh, intercept in in battle stance or charge in berserker stance you'll be saving so much rage and this is such a quality of life all right that's all for today's video thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed and you want to see more please like and subscribe the next class we'll be going over through is Druid. See you in the next one. Bye.